Hello, in the last video we discussed about complexities of different algorithms and we discussed several data types including arrays, linked list, stack, queue and some other data types and we discussed some basic operations like adding or removing some values from certain indexes from the start or end of the list of course, while I'm saying index, some of data types doesn't have index at all, right? They just have some connections between nodes. For example, for linked list, we just have a list of nodes, each connected to each other. If it is a single linked list, then we for each node, we don't know the next item coming, but we don't know the previous one. So we should proceed forward, starting from start to the end. If we want to access an element uh, at the end of the list, then we should start from uh, the beginning of the list and then we should proceed one by one by calling the next item. But if it is a double linked list, then we know both the previous and the next nodes. But again, uh, at any time we don't know the index, I mean uh, in what position the node exists. We just know the connections, the previous or the next nodes. And each of these have certain advantages or disadvantages in certain conditions. For example, let's go to the operations again. For example, for accessing a certain index, of course, the arrays, using arrays, make more sense, right? Because we just have the index, we should just access to the relevant index. It is just like this one getting, it is just all one complexity right for array it is just going to the relevant index but for single linked list since we don't know the index then we should start from beginning and call the next item one by one until we reach to the certain position so in the worst case for big O notation it should be O N but of course linked lists uh, using linked lists might make more sense under certain conditions. For example, let's look at this operation, which is adding a value to the start of the list. For an array, of course, we know where we should point. It is the uh, index 0. But after adding that value to index 0, for all the next values, we should shift the indexes, right? For example, uh, previously, the uh, value at index 0 should go to index 1 after uh, after pushing 1 to the start, which is uh, called as an unshift operation, and vice versa. Like uh, index 2 should go to 3, 3 should go to 4. It should shift 1 more after pushing 1 to the start of the list. But for linked list, since we don't have index at all, we just add a connection at the beginning. That's all. After we add a new node at the beginning, then all of them are automatically shifted, starting from the beginning, since we don't have to deal with the indexes. So these were the summary of the last uh, video, which was regarding the basic data types and operations and the complexities. In terms of complexity, we discussed about time and space complexity, and we discussed that O1 is, the, of course, the most efficient, which is just a, a constant complexity, right? Regardless of the length of the input data. For example, accessing to a certain index, whatever the length of data is, we just go to the relevant index. That's uh, just a constant complexity. Or again, irrelevant from the length of data if we are just returning a constant we don't have to deal with the length of input data right these are all one uh, complexities how about all log n for example binary search on a sorted array right so for example if we are starting from length zero until the end of the or uh, until the uh, size of the array if we are iterating, it should be O n, right? Because the time complexity depends on the length. But for O n, we are not doing that iteration for n times, but each time we are dividing into two 
because if it is already sorted array we can divide to two and we can check the middle point if the value that we are looking for is equals or smaller or larger than the value at the middle then we can pick the part on the left or right so each time we are dividing to two right if we are dividing to two each time how many steps do we have to go until the end like each time dividing by two means this two two x times after doing x divisions we should reach to n length so after this equation we can understand that x is just log n right actually it's ln n but we can just simply write as log n so for this kind of binary division operations which is basically just binary search on a sorted array we can conclude that the time complexity is o log n which is already more efficient than o n because if n goes to a large number log n is already smaller than n itself and linear search is just starting from the first index until the end just checking all values one by one if any of them equals to what value we are looking for how about others like n log n is for example one example is merge sort and for the others like o n square uh, one example is bubble sort so in this video i want to a little bit more look into this kind of sort algorithms in detail so let's see how they work and let's understand why merge sort time complexity is low uh, o n log n and why time complexity of bubble sort is o n squared so let me go to these sorts for example starting from bubble sort let me actually go to my IntelliJ and I already have some implementation here like this is bubble sort and yeah I implemented here the bubble sort so we can see how it works is there are two inner loops so we start from the beginning and then we go until the end and in each operation we do a swap operation so le let me show on an example it would be more easier to understand so here i have an example so let's just call this it's under my tests sorts and bubble sort right yes let's execute this after i execute i see that the return value is the sorted version of my input data which is like which was like this cool so how it works is after i start my first implementation i start from the beginning and i check the current index to see if it is larger than the next value if that is the case i will do a swap operation for example i start from here right this index and i see if 4 is bigger than 8 it is not so i continue if 8 is bigger than 2 then i do a swap operation so here i already in the second operation it should be something like this and the next and then i check if 8 is bigger than 5 if that is the case i will swap so in the next iteration it should be something like this and at the end of this iterations the purpose is putting the maximum value at the end so after the first series of operations i will have the maximum value at the end which will be nine right 
And then after completing this, I will start my second outer iteration and I will position the second maximum value to the second last position. It will be again 9. And then it will be 8. And then it will be 6, I guess. So I will complete all the values until the beginning. The first, which would be the minimum value, would be one here. So this will be my return value, like I see here. So the working principle of bubble sort is starting from beginning and whenever we see a bigger value big, uh, whenever uh, in any of indexes whenever we see a value which is bigger than the next value then we just swap for example for checking four we just keep it here but for eight we will swap two and eight which means actually we are shifting 8, right? We are shifting 8 to the right position. We are pushing the maximum values until the end. So after the first iteration, since 8 would stop here, just before 9, because it is not bigger than 9 anymore, it will stop. But we will proceed with 9. So we will shift 9, we will swap here, we will swap here. So 9 will be at the end. So we are pushing the maximum values until the end. This is the working principle. And what is the complexity? Since we have two for loops, inner loops, it will be O n squared. Because here we are iterating n times. It depends on the length of the data. And this one, again, This will be a little bit smaller than n, but since we are eliminating the constants, again, it will be O n squared. Let's check the next sort, which is the selection sort. Or actually, let me first see insertion sort, because this is very similar. So here what we are doing is, again, we do a very similar swapping algorithm or operation. Let me just first see how it works. This time I will execute the insertion sort class. Again, I get the sorted version of my array, which was the same as I uh, did in the previous example. Here what I'm doing is, this time, Again, I will do several uh, iterations, and in each iteration, I will see if a value is smaller than the previous one. So this time, for example, here, I check 4 and 8, and I see if 8 is smaller than 4. Since it is not, I keep as is, but in the next operation, since 2 is smaller than n, than 8, I will swap this. So for in the second iteration, I will have this values. And then uh, uh, I'll continue after swapping this. Is 2 smaller than 4? Yes, then I'll swap again. So it will be something like this. And the rest. So here what I'm doing is actually I am pulling the minimum value to the leftmost index, right? Because if it is smaller than previous, like here seeing this 2, if 2 is smaller than 8, I just swap, which means I'm pulling 2 to the left direction. So actually, this is the opposite of what I was doing in bubble sort, right? In bubble sort, let's see. Mm, did I delete all I wrote here? I think I did. Okay, so what I was doing is I was just pulling all 
the bigger values to the right direction, but here I'm pulling the minimum values to the left direction. So at the end, uh, after the first outer iterations, I will have one at the leftmost. And then I'll continue with the second iteration. And after completing all inner iterations, I will have what value? Value 2 next to 1. And then I'll continue with the third iteration of the outer loop. And after I complete all the iterations, I will have another 2 next to the previous 2. Right? So eventually I will have all the sorted values in this order. Let's continue. The next is the selection sort. So here, again, let's first see how it works. I have the same data input. And I get the same output, which is working accurately. And let's see how it works. Again, I have two inner loops, and in each loop, this time, I'm not doing a swap operation, but in each time, I'm checking the minimum of the whole list. For example, first, I will check the minimum of this whole list. I will see that 1 is the minimum, so I'll put 1 to index 0. Then, I'll try to find the minimum value of the remaining values, since I put 1 to index 0. I don't have to consider 1 anymore. So from the remaining items, what is the minimum value? It is 2, right? So I will place 2 next to 1. Again, I eliminate these two. What is the minimum of the remaining values? There is another 2 here. I will place here. So I will proceed to the next index. So I will uh, place all the values until I reach to the end of the list. So this is very similar to uh, putting minimum, pulling m minimum values to the left, which was very similar to the insertion sort. But in insertion sort, we were uh, comparing two values right next to each other, and we were just doing the swap. But here, in each operation, we are not just comparing two values, but we are proceeding until the end. And whenever we find the minimum value, which is uh, which was smaller than the previously marked minimum value, then we just mark this as the minimum. And we record the relevant index, and we pull that certain value in the uh, recorded index to our current index. And after positioning this minimum value to the relevant index, we just proceed with the next index. So this i should be coming from the outer loop here. Cool. So these are all bubble sort, insertion sort, and selection sorts are the O n squared complex algorithms, right? Because we, we have two inner loops. So there are more efficient sorting algorithms, for example, merge sort. Here what we are doing is, for example, if we check how it was implemented here is each time we are dividing the whole list into two parts from the middle right left and right we are, we are dividing to two what does it mean actually we are doing the divide and conquer approach because if we are reducing the length of the data the input data of course, the complexity will be automatically reduced, right? It, for example, thinking about n squared or n times operations, if we reduce the length of n, of course, n squared or all the related operations would be automatically reduced. So actually, it, it will be this time, still, even though if I'm doing two inner loops, each time it will not be n and n operations which would conclude in n squared. This time, I will do division by 2 x times. And then in each one, 
I will do n times merging operations. So this, as we discussed before, means actually log n. Right? Doing x times division by 2 to reach uh, to the uh, length of the array means actually doing log n times. And this will uh, conclude in n log n. Which is already more efficient than n squared, right? So how it works is each time we divide to left and right parts. And after doing that, we just merge these sorted parts. And of course, it is recursive, right? It, after dividing to 2, of course, this divided part can be one more divide into two, divided uh, into two parts, separated into two parts. So this function will call itself, as we can see from here, which means we are doing a recursive operation here. So each time divide to two, to two parts, and then uh, try to sort them. After sorting, the small parts merge and go to one upper level and do the same operation again. So divide and conquer. Go until the smallest parts. Do the sorting operation in the smallest, since we already reduced the length as much as possible. Do the sorting over there on the smallest part. And then after we do already the sorting, then merge with the uh, relevant equivalent parts and then go to the one upper level. This is the mentality. And there is one very similar algorithm, which is the quick sort. Quick sort is again doing the division to left and right parts, but we just move the middle parts on air. Like we are not uh, creating additional resources or arrays or lists, but we are just moving the middle parts dynamically on the existing list. So in terms of time complexity, it is uh, the just same efficiency. It has the same efficiency with merge sort. But since it is not creating any additional resources, in terms of memory uh, complexity, it is better than performing better than merge sort. So these were uh, all types of sorts. Each has uh, different advantages or disadvantages on certain types so it should be decided depending on what what type of or what length of data we have